Coming up next on your local news on Fox 9, a local bar here in Yuma is being sued by victims of a drunk driving accident. A bizarre night of gunfights and explosions gives way to a manhunt and a city caught in the middle. I'm Craig Boswell in Boston. We'll have the latest on the search for the second suspect in the Boston Marathon bombing. Plus, new details coming to light about the arson suspects here in Brawley. I'm Maurice Schumann with the details coming up. Those stories and Nicole Gomez will have your weekend weather forecast. Your local news on Fox 9 starts now. From Yuma and San Luis to El Centro and the Imperial Valley, this is KECY Fox 9 News. I think it's fair to say that for this entire week, we've been in a pretty direct confrontation with evil. Good evening. Thank you for joining me. Anna Chalk will be joining us a little later. I'm Vanessa Herrera and this is your local news on Fox 9. There is so much news to get to today and you just heard from Secretary of State John Kerry who summed up America's reaction to the events this week in Massachusetts. But first, new information tonight about the arson suspects in Brawley. Police are tying four teenagers to at least one of the fires that destroyed a business. Your local news reporter Mauricio Marin has been following the story all day and has more. It's unfortunate that we have juveniles uh, in this position, but um, that's what the investigation revealed. Brawley Police Chief Mark Gilmore saddened to report four teens may be responsible for arson fires around Brawley. They were uh, incarcerated in the Imperial County Juvenile Hall on charges of arson, conspiracy to commit arson, conspiracy to commit commercial burglary, and commercial burglary. One teen, 15 years old. Their names not being released because they are underage. The other three, 14 years old. Authorities didn't go into detail about the evidence they found leading them to the suspects. Not really proper for us to comment on the actual evidence um, other than what's been released in the, in the um, uh, press reports. And we may never know who they are. And it's really important to understand with juvenile offenders um, we cannot release names, and those are proceedings that are not open to the public. Now, authorities aren't releasing the names of the suspects that they say are behind these arsons, but they do say they did find enough evidence here at this fire at A Plus Furniture to arrest them. Brawley Police Chief Gilmore grateful to ATF agents for helping with the investigation and the public. Uh, we did receive pieces that helped us put the puzzle together. All four suspects expected to be charged next week. For your local news in HD, I'm Maurice Marin. Well, the massive manhunt in Boston is now over. Four days after the horrific attack in the Boston Marathon, authorities killing one suspect and arresting the other. Fox News correspondent Craig Boswell is in Boston with the latest. Thousands of people in Boston and the surrounding suburbs are relieved as police now have the second suspect in the Boston Marathon bombing in custody. More shots ring out in Watertown, Massachusetts, as police surround the second suspect in the Boston Marathon bombing, hiding underneath the canvas in a boat in a backyard. We are so grateful to be here right now. We're so grateful to bring justice and a closure to this case. Boston police and state police and local police across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts responded with professionalism and bravery over five long days. And tonight, because of their determined efforts, we've closed an important chapter in this tragedy. This comes after 19-year-old Zakar Zaniev managed to escape on foot from an overnight shootout with police in Watertown. The other suspect, the man's brother, 26-year-old Tamerlan Zaniev, was killed during that shootout. That happened after the two men reportedly killed an MIT campus police officer before stealing this SUV. Investigators say the brothers came from a region near Chechnya. An FBI official says two years ago, an unnamed foreign government asked the agency to check on the older brother because they had concerns about possible extremist ties. The official says the FBI talked to him, but it did not find anything at that time. Investigators say they got a tip from a resident in Watertown about bloody clothes and blood on that boat, which led them to the suspect. In Boston, Craig Boswell, Fox News. 
Well, we're going to move on to some other news, but before we do, we're going to take a live look at our Fox 9 tower cam. The current temperature is a perfect 75 degrees, and the winds are so much calmer than what we've seen earlier this week, and the humidity is riding around 18 percent. Nicole Gomez is here now with a quick check of your local forecast. Nicole? Thanks, Vanessa. And before we get to weather, we just want to wish you a very happy birthday. Now, as far as your temperatures this morning, we started out very cool across the valley, 46 in Imperial, El Central, 46 as well, 50 in Mexicali, and 53 in Yuma. Good thing is we started to warm up this afternoon with plenty of sunshine as that ridge of high pressure continues to build. So as far as tonight, the temperatures won't be as cool. The winds will be light. I'll let you know what you can expect for Saturday and Sunday coming up. Vanessa? Sounds good. Thanks, Nicole. Well, should a local bar be held responsible for a patron's drunk driving accident? That's the point of a lawsuit recently filed by a Yuma attorney. Your local news anchor Anna Hayes has been working on this story. And Anna, the three people at the heart of this say they were very badly hurt. That's right, Vanessa. So badly hurt, in fact, they believed they're entitled to millions of dollars. Let me back up a little bit and bring you up to date on this complicated case. Pedro Montes was arrested on March 29th of this year for failing to appear at his January court hearing. He was charged with eight criminal counts stemming from a drunk driving crash that ultimately injured three others. Felice Montes was drinking late one night back in October 2011 at the Mineshaft Bar in Yuma. In the early morning hours, he hit a woman with his car right in front of the bar. Then, after that, he hit two other pedestrians with his car as well. Now, all three of those people have filed a lawsuit against the Mineshaft. The victim's attorney claims that these victims are entitled to millions of dollars because of the, quote, extensive in injuries and permanent disabilities. We spoke with that attorney, C. Candy Camarena, today. He told your local news that the mineshaft may be responsible for serving Montez liquor to the point where he became so intoxicated, then they allowed him to leave. Now, Vanessa, this story is far from over, and we will, of course, keep you posted on any and all updates. For now, I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Anna. Our local Marines were at it again this evening, training throughout Yuma as part of Weapons and Tactics Instructor Training. MCAS Yuma was conducting the Humanitarian Assistance and Disaster Recovery exercise around Kiwanis Park. The military base puts on this exercise for students about twice a year here in Yuma, and this time it was a little bit different. They worked on strengthening WTI students' understanding on how to respond to natural disasters in order to help those in need around the world. Oh yeah, this is fantastic. We love to see our Marines in action, and we love to see our equipment in action. It's very exciting stuff. And the WTI training always pulls a big crowd because it is pretty amazing to see them in action. Well, here's a look at what's straight ahead on KECY Fox 9 News. Parents are oftentimes a teenager's greatest influence, and with prom and graduation season almost here, your local news anchor Anna Chalk will join us to explain what parents can do to help keep their kids safe. Plus, information about the victims of Wednesday night's fertilizer plant explosion. Dominic Di Natale is in Texas and will have the latest details. Welcome back. Police in Arizona put a big dent in the illegal sale of spice or synthetic marijuana. Detectives in Glendale discovered a lab at a business that was manufacturing the drug. Fox's Mark Martinez has the story. From the outside, it's clear the Pronto Mart in Glendale sells a lot of beer. But according to police, a store manager was selling something else. This synthetic marijuana, also known as spice. First of all, it's illegal to possess, and it's certainly illegal to sell. Glendale Police Sergeant Brent Combs says investigators were tipped off by Arizona tax revenue officers who were performing an audit of the business. And once they got into that business towards the back rooms, they saw something that they were very suspicious of. There were materials and chemicals that really sparked their interest and they, th they knew they were dealing with some sort of an, a lab at that point. Detectives say they found 250 pounds of spice in a bin waiting to be packaged, along with approximately 6,000 small vials ready to be sold. Already packaged vials with the product in its state that would make someone high. It's already been sprayed and packaged. Investigators still trying to find out how long the spice may have been packaged and sold out of the store. But just two weeks ago, state lawmakers passed a bill making any type of synthetic marijuana illegal. It's like when you manufacture methamphetamine, all the 
the horrible things that go into manufacturing that's still in that stuff when you take it into your body. That was Fox's Mark Martinez reporting. He mentioned in his story that Arizona recently passed a bill that makes synthetic marijuana illegal. Well, a similar law was recently signed by Governor Jerry Brown making the sale of those drugs illegal in California as well. And a registered sex offender has a new address in Yuma and the police department here wants you to know about it. This is Melissa Schaefer. In 2008, she entered a plea agreement in Yuma County on one count of attempted sexual abuse. Police say she had sexual contact with a 16-year-old boy that she knew. She spent some time in jail and then 36 months on probation. And today, she is living in the 700 block of West 1st Street. Police say she is a level 2 sex offender, which means there is a good chance she could reoffend. We're coming into a very busy season for high school students. In fact, prom and graduation celebrations are right around the corner. Your local news anchor Anna Chalk joins us now. And Anna, it's a time when parents should talk to teens about the dangers of drinking and driving, but sadly, many don't. That is true, Vanessa, but get this. Most teens say their parents are their greatest influence when it comes to these types of behaviors. In fact, in a recent survey, three quarters of teens surveyed by Mothers Against Drunk Drivers said their mom and dad's opinion matters. And get this, a majority of deaths from underage drinking were not the result of traffic accidents. Instead, they, were, they came from homicides, suicides, alcohol poisoning, and various other causes. So that should be proof that what you say to your kid really does matter. The organization MAD says talking to your teen about underage drinking can be difficult, but it doesn't have to be. They say remember to not lecture or be heavy handed. Instead, approach your kids in a loving way and listen to what they have to say. Also, the experts say sometimes what you do is as important as what you say. So set a good example and keep track of your teens, especially on big nights like prom or graduation. The last thing the experts suggest, make an action plan. Help your kids brainstorm ways to deal with peer pressure when it comes to the use of alcohol. And make sure you're clear about what you expect from them. Incidentally, I talked with Sergeant Leanne Worthen with the Yuma Police Department. She said they don't have any programs specifically to address this issue beyond the work that they usually do with high schoolers right here in Yuma. But she did tell me that there will be a police presence at each prom. So the most important thing, enjoy yourself, but be safe. Vanessa, back to you. Great advice, Anna. Thank you. Still to come on KECY Fox 9 News, wacky spring-like weather in many parts of the nation causing havoc for airline travelers, but one big airport making the long delays and stress of traveling a bit easier with some really cute four-legged friends. Those stories and lots more yet to come. Keep it right here. We'll be right back.